Hello everybody, I'm Katrina Morton, I'm a sensory motor psychotherapist and what I'd like to talk about today is the different parts of us that we have. We might think of ourselves as one complete human. We know who we are, we know what our name is. But how we're actually made up is we're made of a series of parts. We might be quite aware that we can be a slightly different person when we're at work and we've got a work head on to when we're at home with our family. But the parts of us are slightly different. They can be much younger parts of ourselves, which have formed when we've had an early childhood experience that's been quite significant, that it's kind of made a stamp on us at that age. And that part of us remains at that age and with those similar experiences and triggers. What happens is we might notice we have a young child part, we could have more than one young child part. Our adult self might be completely fine going about its business, interacting with people in a jokey kind of way and then something might happen like suddenly we feel like we're being left out or nobody's given us any attention and we can notice that we actually have quite a big response to that. We might even feel upset and surprised by how big the response is that doesn't really make sense of the adult self. But when we can learn to recognise that that's a young part of us that maybe had that experience of being left out, of nobody talking to them in the playground or in the family, then that can be quite a raw area for that young part. We'd have to be aware that when we have that really strong reaction to something, that shouldn't really affect us so strongly. And we try and work out, what on earth was that about? Why did I feel like that? When we consider that actually that might be a young part of us that was poked, that was triggered, and behaved and reacted in that age-appropriate way, then it can start to make a bit more sense. When we have developmental trauma, and that doesn't necessarily look like the kind of traumas that we would associate with being an adult, which would be like much bigger events. We're little and things have a bigger impact on us because we're more vulnerable, we're more defenseless. And so things really do impact and imprint on us. And they will stay at that age, but they'll also reside in a particular part of the body. And that part of the body will have a certain response when certain things are happening. So if we have a young scared child part, then a part of us will either freeze or just begin to withdraw a little bit. We might turn away to one side. We might find it more difficult to give someone eye contact. We might actually curl up and feel like we're shrinking a little bit and instead of looking out on things, looking up and around at things. The more we can understand about those parts of us, the more we can understand about our childhood developmental wounds and how they have stayed with us. They stay with us in a physical way as well as in a way that makes us feel certain things and behave in a certain way. The next step up from that is what we call structural dissociation where the parts of us are quite distinct and they might get switched on when certain things happen, when certain triggers come up. And we might not know what those triggers are, but we can feel that sudden switch or other people around us might notice just a sudden change in ourselves, and we'll find ourselves behaving in a really different way. For some people, it can be a very angry part that actually is quite argumentative and quite forthright and can maybe be slightly more aggressive than our normal getting on with life part is.
another part of us that might get triggered if there's any kind of conflict then we just shut down we can't think of anything to say we want to act we want to react but actually we can't and afterwards we might go why did I not say so and so why couldn't I respond why did I just sit there in silence why did I do or say nothing there's another clue that's probably a part and we might be very unaware that we have these things but it might be quite obvious to people around us when those parts are quite separate when they just switch and flick and our personality changes quite distinctly and our behavior changes quite distinctly then that could be a clue that you've got a little bit more of structural dissociation the dissociative part is important because when that gets triggered we go offline and that part of us comes forward the step up from that is when we actually have what's called dissociative identity disorder DID it used to be called multi-personality disorder and while it's a lot rarer it's also probably a bit more common than the majority of the population would assume and that's when we've had very significant trauma, prolonged significant trauma that means that what's happening in the here and now or on a regular basis is actually too much for us to cope with and it's certainly too much for us to cope with and try and function in normal life on the outside, going to school, going to work and so we develop and you know our brain is amazingly designed to do this we develop an ability to ourself to dissociate and another part of us to take the anger, the abuse, the fear of what's happening at the time. Those parts, when we've got DID, actually can have very, very different personalities. And people with DID will have very distinctive things. They will have memory lapses, They'll have things that they've maybe bought that they really don't remember buying. If someone's a vegetarian, they might even have a meat eating part that will go to the supermarket and buy meat, put it in the fridge. And then when that part goes and our normal, getting on with life part comes on board, have no memory of why that's happening. People around people with DID will be very aware of this switch and these parts can actually look really different for the majority of people but not all people they'll have no awareness of their different parts sometimes these are called alters depending on what kind of modality your reference that you're using but they all have the same distinctive way of operating they're separate they switch something will cause a part to dissociate and another part will come on board as a completely different persona and a different set of skills. In the very extreme, these parts have different names, different identities. They might not be aware of each other, but sometimes people with DID have a kind of a bit of a slow realization, both from what they're noticing, the gaps in their life. For some people, they look in the mirror and they actually don't recognize who they're seeing. Those are the extreme results of very extreme and prolonged trauma, but it's a very real condition. And it's something that does need very specialist help to deal with it. It's definitely not something for just talking therapy. You need a therapist there that really understands the different parts, can recognize them switching and know what to do for each part. The goal is always to get all the parts as integrated, as aware of each other, to be able to bring the getting on with normal life part of us, which is the one that goes about daily business, the kind of higher functioning adult that we have, and to try and get that adult to be aware of the others and to be able to work and to understand what these parts of us need. But we all have it to a degree because we're all capable of dissociation. And we 
all have had difficult childhood experiences. Most of us are aware that we've got a stroppy teenager somewhere in there and that's perfectly normal but I just wanted to give you an overview of when it's just slightly out of the what most people would think of as the common range so that you can have a better understanding of yourself that you're not stupid you're not overreacting you're not oversensitive you might just have parts that are a bit more triggered than your normal getting on with life self is and you know hopefully we can have the more understanding we can have the more compassion we can have the more ability to be kind to ourselves don't beat up on ourselves so much don't let the head go into the narrative of i'm stupid there's something wrong with me i'm broken and all the other things it can do we all have the same brain, we all have the same nervous system. It's quite complex, but they all do work in a similar way. So it doesn't matter where you come on this spectrum, there is definitely a therapist out there that can help you if you feel like you need help. But this has just really primarily been for information, understanding, and just shining a light on some of these things that are a result of trauma, but are very misunderstood and often wrongly diagnosed. So I hope that's been helpful. If you've got any questions, send them in. I know it's quite a complex area, but I'll answer all your questions. And if you've enjoyed watching this video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel below, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye-bye.